France was a big influence early on in your career um, and inspired you, I think, from, from what I, I read. What inspires you now, though? Like, are there, is that still France your main domain, or do you, do you like to travel and, and see other? No, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Francophile. I, I mean, I always have been. I, I, love, I love the history. Um, I love the culture. Um, I, I love the, 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 the idea that they wake up in the morning thinking about what they're going to have for lunch and they finish lunch and think about what they're going to have for dinner. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's wonderful. Um, I, I love the idea of the, the, the streets, uh, the market streets. I love the idea of the roving markets. I lived in Paris for a year and a half. And food is such an important part uh, of that culture, and it has been for a long, long time. Um, but really what attracted me to... to, to to becoming a chef, more than anything, I think, was the lifestyle. Um, uh, one, one book that I remember that I received very, at a very early age, and I, I was already cooking, but never had the idea of becoming a chef, uh, received the Great Chefs of France. I don't know if anybody remembers that book. But it, it, it really um, uh, tells the story, I think, of about seven or eight of the great French chefs, Alain Chappelle, Michel Gerard, Paul Bocuse, um, you know the names. And, what really resonated to me was their lifestyle. It wasn't about the recipes. Uh, of course, they were part of it. It wasn't about the restaurant, but of course that was part of it. It was the lifestyle that they lived, the camaraderie, the history, um, the, the, the connection with the farm, the connection with their suppliers, the associations and, and friendships they, that, they, that, they, that they started to uh, have with their guests. I mean, all that was just, I thought that was just amazing. That was just magnificent. What kind of career you could have that totally, you were totally absorbed in and, and had to be 100% uh, committed to. And, and, and it was cooking, it was running in restaurants. And as a result, you had some pretty good mentors. You had Guy Savoy and, and Roland Hennen as well. And, and they played a big part. Can you tell us a little bit more about that part and the role of mentors? Yeah, well, the role I mean, of mentors. There's a lot of young chefs here tonight. It's, and just it, that it, it, it's certainly very important. I mean, I've had so many um, uh, very influential people in, in my life. Uh, certainly my brother, my, well, my mother in the beginning, of course, who, 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 who really taught me, you know, about um, uh, awareness and paying attention, you know, detail. You know, it's all, it's all in the, you heard that phrase over again, it's all in the detail. Well, you know, guys, it all is. Um, my work ethic. You know, I was a woman who was, uh, uh, I was young when my parents divorced and my mother went to work, you know, six days a week and um, raised, raised five boys and, and a young girl on her own. And, you know, I mean, you really had to be focused to, to maintain a, you know, a, a group like that. And, and her, her work ethic was extraordinary. And the example that she set for me is something that, that I maintain today. Of course, my brother Joseph, who um, wanted to become, become a chef at a very early age uh, and um, would, would cook for us weird things. He would watch Graham Kerr on, on, on TV and <laughs> he had all these cookbooks and he would cook all these things for us. But when I actually started to cook, he was the one that you know, taught me how to make hollandaise sauce. Uh, and it was such an important moment in my life and, and something that I really appreciate was doing that you know, over and over and over and over and over again because you know, that's really how you become good at something. It's all about repetition and you know, there's so many, I think there's certainly, I was the same way as a young chef, you want to do something else, something new. But you know, cooking is, is, is very basic and very fundamental and, and, and doing the same thing over and over again, you have to, you find comfort in that. And I found very, uh, a lot of comfort in that. Rituals was another thing that was very important to I me, mean, doing things, at the same time every day, you know, having to get up in the morning, you do your ordering, you know, you have your mise en place, you go into work, you do your things at the same time every day, working towards that that 5:30 service time. Very important, very structured. Um, it kept me, it, it, it really kept me very comfortable in the kitchen. I think that's why I, I became such a, such a wonderful cook was I really loved rituals and repetition. But you mentors, I, you know, again, you know, Roland Hennen, you talked about, yes. talked about my brother, you know, Roland Hennen, who early on. Um, gave me, uh, my, my mother gave me my first cookbook. Um, what was that? Well, I'm sure she bought it because it was probably the most attractive book on the shelf. It was leather bound, you know, gold writing, and it was a treasury of great recipes. And some of you won't know who this is, some of you will, by Mary and Vincent Price. Yes. <laughs> that was a classic book. It's a classic. It's a classic. It's a classic. It goes, it's long gone out of print. It goes for great amounts of money. It's now. embossed and yes. you know, it's padded leather, you know, cover. It's a terrific book. Yeah, it was a great book. I mean, I know, you know God bless her. Um, uh, and Roland Hennig gave me my second book, was, which was the book by Ferdinand Point, which really kind of changed my life, and that was my gastronomy. My gastronomy. And, and it was such an important book because I realized. After a while, I mean, the stories in it are, are very compelling, and the stories are, are, are my favorite part of that book. 
And there's some really, really great stories in there. And then the recipes aren't really traditional recipes. They're, 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 it's, an, it's, it's, it's a narrative on how to do something. And, and, and the genius of that is that whatever skills you have when, you're, when you first do the recipe uh, result in the quality of the execution of the recipe. So it's actually your, it's your recipe. It becomes your recipe. You, you own it because you've, you've executed, it you've executed it at, the, at the highest level that you could at that moment. And it evolves, like all recipes evolve. And it was just, uh, you know, when, I, when we first started the French Line Cookbook, I, 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 I suggested that to my editor that we write a cookbook without recipes and just do narratives. Of course, she thought I was a lunatic. Um, <laughs> but it just goes to show you how far, how far we've come or how far we regress is that we have to have, you know, recipe, photo, recipe, photo, recipe, photo. We have to be told exactly what to do. Um, and, and as important as that is, there has to be, there has to be some, 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 some deeper understanding of food and technique and, and so that you can really make it your own. And, and that's such an important thing. And, and that's what Ferdinand, books, Ferdinand Point's book really, really taught me, was that you know, recipes, and, and that comes from you know, the quote that you... you, you Which uh, we you, didn't bring the book up here. We're I'm going sorry, to bring the book up I as need a problem. My security <laughs> blanket. Yeah. Oh. Um, but that's where all that comes from, is, is just that, you know, the evolution of a, of a, of a recipe.